Well, I usually don't unmute myself, but thank you so much, Tim, for the super chat. And uh, thank you so much. I'm looking forward to um, having a nice little uh, relaxing day. Um, and thank you for all you guys, uh, for all your service, um, for all you service members um, out there, at least in the United States. But thank, again, thank you so much for the super chat. I appreciate that.
All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to week number 125. This is Open Live Q&A, and my name is Mr. McLogan, and I know many of you are wrapping up the school year. Some of you maybe have already graduated or finished up the year, so congratulations on wrapping up this year. This was a, uh, a monumental year for me um, because I wasn't inside of the classroom, so many of you guys all obviously will always ask me questions like, oh, are you still teaching? And yes, this year is one that I actually stepped away from the classroom to kind of do online teaching the whole time. So it has been definitely something a little bit different. Um, I will say a little bit nicer when I do these live streams on Sunday night, not worrying about all the things that I have to do for the next day, like lesson plans and grading um, and tests and stuff like that. But it is, um, I will say a lot of these live streams has been one of the things that has been really helpful um, to still kind of connect with you, you know, you guys out there as far as like my students, um, as I would say, and just to kind of, you know, connect there to be with you guys, to answer questions. And so that's basically what we do for these live streams. Um, happy to kind of take any questions I have for you guys on the chat, but if you do have any questions on math questions, then you guys can go ahead and use this link at brianmcglogan.com forward slash Q and a. And then also if you have any math or if you're taking any like questions during the um, over the summertime or, you know, just really maybe to start preparing. I mean, in my opinion, I really don't want you to start preparing <laughs> for next year. Uh, but I do know that some students are taking you no know, summer classes and um, maybe some students had a really, really tough time this year. So it might be one of the things, unfortunately, that is going to be kind of needed or required. So if you do need a little help, um, we do have the discord link that you can go and check out where students are, you know, basically there to, you know, help you with your math, to answer your questions, um, and just kind of do all the other things that I can't always do on a Sunday night live stream. But however, every Sunday night at 9 p.m., I am here to help you guys out with your, um, with your questions and, you know, kind of take them for you guys on there. And, um, but I, I will be here throughout the whole summer answering questions, doing the exact same thing. So this is a week number 125 guys. This is 125 weeks. I have been consistent. And last week, if you're on the live stream, I actually missed it on Sunday night. Um, we actually were out of town and I actually meant to do it, but I just actually forgot because we were with uh, friends. So I went back and did Monday. So I still count it as an extra um, live stream from there. So your voice is not audible. You guys can't hear? Hello. Oh, it seems like it's coming through. Oh, it's not. Um, maybe not on mute. Hey, eh? I don't know. Uh, I can't believe it's three more days. Well, that is crazy, Gabe. I know three more days of school. Um, when I got back into town, we actually had our um, graduation ceremony and I was so mad. I didn't get to go and see it. Um, I really want to see some of the old students that uh, were graduating this year that, you know, I, I taught. Um, so I was kind of sad to kind of get out of this first graduation ceremony that I kind of missed. And, um, but yeah, so that was a little, little difficult, um, to kind of go through, but you know, it's, it's, uh, one of those things about, you know, changing, change things up and, um, definitely looking forward to, um, kind of revising, um, this content. Cause I feel like this year was just been, you know, you, you feel like like COVID is like gone away or things are going to be changing. And it just kind of seems like it was a lot of the same or a lot of difficult, you know, I think kind of going back, getting back into the swing of things. Um, you know, one thing I've heard from a lot of students was like, yeah, from like, how crazy the year before was and the year after that was, and then trying to get into like a semi normalized year this year was uh pretty kind of difficult to um, not only catch back up, but also to kind of like assess students where they're at and their understandings and stuff like that. Um, Asia, I mean, as far as, uh, you know, arithmetic sequences, I think the main thing that I would want you to, you know, main tip I would say for you to do is, you know, just make sure you know the formulas. Um, that's going to be very helpful when you want to be able to find, you know, your given term and everything like that. And then obviously, you know, when you're finding the terms, you're looking for that common difference and usually like the first term, I believe. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't think there's any major tip I can tell you or give to you that's going to make things thing click. Like it's going to take some practice, um, but make sure you do know those formulas and difference from geometric sequences. That will definitely be help you out. Um... Yes. And then you want to find, yeah, I mean, it, there's a lot of different, you know, problems that come around for it, but thank you so much. Uh, knee for knee for Kathy Kitty. Did it? Um, let's go ahead and see three more days. That's crazy. Uh, how do you write a square root function based off of a table? 
A square root function based off a table. Um, that's good. Well, I mean, I guess you'd want to look into what is the input and then what's the output. And then it's a good question. I don't think I've ever done a problem like that. I mean, maybe I have, but I guess what I would try to do is see what square number is going to be the closest and then try to look for operations like multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. Um, that's going to take you to whatever number you have, right? Like if you have like 15, that could be the square root of, um, or not 15. The, yeah, if you had like 15, that could be the square root of 16, right? And then like minus one on the outside, right? And see if that pattern falls through or something in that ground. Like, I mean, the main thing when you're looking from a table, writing the rule from a table or writing the rule from a sequence, like arithmetic sequence, you know, you're looking for those, you're looking for those patterns. Um, and that can be difficult, right? So um, it just, you know, takes a little bit of time. Um, I think when you're dealing with square root functions, you're looking for square numbers or numbers that are going to be very close to square numbers. Um, and then you're going to look for those operations, you know, from there. Um, arithmetic sequences, you're looking for terms that have a common difference, right? So, you know, they're going to be adding or subtracting a certain number, in you know, consistently between those terms. So if you're writing a rule, you know, you're looking for that linear um, kind of sequence there. Uh, <laughs> that is very cool. Uh, well, awesome, Baba Kid. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Yeah, I'm definitely looking into... Uh, putting some more videos in algebra, algebra two, algebra one, geometry, calculus, and um, pre-calculus as well. <laughs> yes, I would say photo math has been uh, very helpful for many, many students. <laughs> I will say though, as far as photo math, because I've used photo math, like it's a great, it's a great tool. I have nothing against photo math. Um, but I would highly recommend still just making sure you're challenging yourself to try to make sure you understand the material as much as you possibly can. Um, because obviously, as you know, you know, I think one of the big, big issues that I've seen from a lot of students coming from this year is like, oh, I just used photo math last year, right? My teacher wasn't checking in my work or like we didn't have to show our work or, you know, turned in, you know, I got an easy A. It was great. And then now they have to get assessed and they're like, holy crap, I am really struggling now with like the understanding of what I was supposed to know. So, I mean, there's going to be a little bit of responsibility from there. Like technology is amazing. Like use the most of that technology as you possibly can. Um, but in the same respect, the, you know, make sure you're kind of holding yourself a little rough because eventually if, um, eventually when you need to recall that information, like it's, it's going to show. All right. Well, hey, Michelle, happy to help you out. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to try to get these questions. Again, if you guys do have questions, go to brianmcclothing.com forward slash Q&A. I will um, more than happy to see how many questions I can answer from you guys uh, back on there. But, you know, I'm also, I'm just kind of cutting to the math questions. I know a lot of times, um, you know, at this end of the year, guys, we're not going to have a ton of questions uh, for math questions because most of you guys are like finished up, which is totally cool. But uh, I'll get to those questions. And then after that, if you guys have any more questions, I'll be more than happy to go there. Um, do you know what type of mathematics would be in an economics course? Uh, no, I never taught economics, so I am not fully aware. All right, let's go ahead and get into the math. My eyes, um, it was kind of a busy, busy day today, and I know many of the holiday, holiday weekend and everything like that, so I want to get right into, oh, I was already had this. I'm going to get right into the math um, that we have, and then if you guys have any questions after that, I'm more than happy to knock that out uh but game i got answer look at this question should i stay until 12 a.m every night that'll help me how should i keep myself from getting distracted when i study tomorrow during memorial day should i turn off my phone yes i'd say i just time block you know try to do like 30 minutes here 45 minutes there right you can't just like like i'm already tired right now i mean i wake up early and i try to do work but even when i wake up early and do work um, you know, I can't focus that time. So just realize that your brain can only focus like on a, like a very consistent focus for so long. So give yourself time, give yourself breaks, um, in there. And I would just try to say like, you know, to do maybe start at like 15 minutes, like, all right, 15 minutes, I'm going to do something. Then I'm going to get up and go for a walk or I'm going to play a video game or like whatever may be the case. And then try to increase that to 30 minutes. Right. And then maybe try to get to like 40 minutes, um, or 45 minutes. You know, I think hour is you probably start losing some of your mental brain power, um, you know, and be able to focus from there. But I think it's going to be much more effective for you to, you know, do like four study sessions at, you know, 45 minutes, then try to do like, all right, I'm going to like do a three hour session, you know, at one time. 
Like you're just not going to get as much out of it from in there. At least in my opinion. Yeah, I think procrastination, you just got to understand that's just reality, right? So just say like, all right, I'm going to do four 45 minute sessions and pick out those 45 minutes, you know, for tomorrow. Um, and then just say like, all right, here's when I'm going to do these 45 minutes, like maybe two in the morning two one in the afternoon, one in the evening. Right. And, you know, break it up that way. I think that will help you better space out your time and then also give your brain some, some, uh, chance to kind of like rejuvenate, to relax. And, uh, yeah, I don't know why I don't get it. It's, it works. So you're saying on the BrianMcCooler.com forward slash q and I'm assuming. Uh, I don't get it. Like, oh, that's a challenge. I'm not doing that right now. Um, like when I click on it. No, not that one. It is also pinned as a comment. Um, so if you guys go to the pinned comments, um, you can also go and see it there. And I'm not sure. Maybe check out the, um, I don't know. I, I literally, let me just go and check. It works for me on mine. So maybe just try typing in. I don't know. Yeah, that's, I don't know. Maybe just try typing in directly. I don't know why the link doesn't work for some people. Because for some people it works and some people it doesn't. Um, all right. Help me in my math classes for six years. Wow. I'm well, so happy to help you out. How do you study 30 new chapters which are completely unknown in two months of time, sir? I have no idea. I uh, have never had to study 30 new chapters. I would say the exact same thing, like time block stuff. Um, you know, so you can say, do as much as you, you know, take the 30 chapters and say, all right, you have two months, that's 60 days, right? So you're gonna have to roughly break that up. Um, so I just try to break it up as much as possible into the smallest amount of time. I right, started, so we started learning derivatives and how do we find a slope at a point? Just like, I don't know, like, well, I mean, the finding the slope at a point is, you know, going to be looking at the derivative. So you're going to take the derivative of the function. And then at the point, you're going to be plugging that point in for uh, the derivative function. And that's going to give you the slope at that point. So you basically are going to just find the derivative and then you're going to plug in the input value, which is going to be representing where the point is. So um, if you go and take a look at my playlist, I have a ton of examples on derivative and then also finding the slope at a given point, which is basically, again, as I mentioned, just finding the derivative and then you're just going to plug in that point. And you taught me more of my teacher. Well, awesome. So happy to help you out. Yes, it is a very, very common occurrence. I'm not sure. I don't think I saw your question more than once, but I do apologize. Um, I'm not able to get to everybody's question, but hopefully I did help you out or at least get your response from there. All right. Well, very welcome, Mike. Happy to be with you. Awesome. Yeah, I'd just say, you know, um, I do, that's a lot of chapters in, in so many times. So I just try to, you know, one chapter every other day, I guess, you know, just break it up that way. Um, on trigonometry with the sine law and the cosine law, you make an N or a Z out of it. I have no idea what you're talking about. An N or a Z. Could you explain how it works? Um, Jacob, I would recommend if you have that question to go ahead and plug it into brianmcgulley.com forward slash Q and I'm not really sure if I understand what you're referring to with the N and the Z. Um, I mean, you can go ahead and get it back in the chat, but I'm going to start getting into some math questions here really quickly. So, um, you know, feel free to add it into there and I'll try to do my best. And Two dimensional vectors, how can you use the dot product to calculate the projection of a vector on another vector? Um, I, I don't recall the formulas off the top of my head, but um, there are formulas for that that I would just follow from there. Oh, the, the parallel angle theorems, angle patterns. Um, I'm still like, I don't know, my brain's just not connecting what we have here. All right, CR7. Cheers. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, but yeah, all right. I'm going to go ahead and come back to the math, but feel free to kind of add in there and I'll try to do my best for you guys. 
All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into some of the math questions. Again, if you guys do have math questions, for those of you that are on, right, and if you do want to submit a question, I know the end of the year, but maybe you still have an exam coming up, then you guys can definitely go to brianmclogan.com forward slash Q&A. Um, and, the, uh, and I'll try to see if I can get to your questions. I still just don't understand, Jacob, what that means, like the angle patterns, the parallel angle theorems. I understand the parallel angle theorems, but I'm not sure what you're referring to as far as the law of sines, law of cosines. Like, I'm trying to think when we use a lot of those, unless we're dealing with like a word problem or like a bearings problem, um, where we're using those um, those theorems with law of sines, law of cosines. So if you want to elaborate on that, that would be very helpful. Or if there's a video that I did, um, that would be helpful. You know, some kind of explanation that I did. Um, all right, so let's go and get into this math. That have here, and I think we just have like three or four questions, so I'll just kind of get to those. And then, um, if you guys have any questions, y'all feel free. Like I said, guys, add them into the um, actually, there you go. Um, put them into the chat or at brianmcloan.com forward slash QA. Okay, so let's get into this one. So here's an exponential equation. All right, so all of this is in a power. Um, so that two squared, right, is really the same thing as four. So I'm just going to simplify that, um, to get rid of dividing by 16, I'm going to multiply by 16 on both sides. Okay. So let's see what we got here. We have a two to the negative three X minus two, um, four times 16 is going to equal a 64, right? Now I can rewrite a 64 as a base two. That's going to be what two to the sixth power. So two to the negative three X minus two equals a two to the sixth power. Okay, now using the one-to-one -one property, I can say negative three X minus two is equal to six, right? Just set the numerator equal to the numerator. Um, add a two, add a two. So I get a negative three X is equal to an eight. Divide by negative three, divide by negative three. X equals a negative eight over three. Okay, um, now since there is like no solution or all our numbers, what I'm gonna do is, um, I can go ahead and I'll try to do my best to remember that question. So if you put it in brianmcloden.com forward slash Q&A, I'll try to, I'll, I'll definitely go and see it, but I'll try to remember to help you out for that one as well. Um, so X equals a negative eight thirds. Now I can go and check my answer. Go ahead and plug that back in there. If I do, that'd give me two to the sixth power and which would give you 64 divided by four divided by 16 which will work, right? It's going to be two to the fourth, which is fourth. So, yep, there is going to be your answer. Come on. Voila. Well, thank you. All right. Um, so the student was asking, like, what do we do when we have exponents raised to, like, a power different than them? So, you know, just kind of important to, like, know your rules. Like, if I have a, a x to the negative n, Okay, that is equal to a one over x to the n. All right. In the same respect, if you have a um, let's say a, a over b raised to the negative n, okay, that is equal to a b over a raised to the nth power. Okay. So when you have something like this, this is going to be the reciprocal. And again, you can practice this like with numbers. Okay. You can use it like very simple numbers if you wanted to. But the main thing I want you to see here is if you have a fraction raised to a negative power, just use the reciprocal, right? So this is going to be the same thing as five halves raised to the third power. And this is going to be times, same thing I can do over here. I believe that's a four. So that's going to be a four over 25 raised to the second power. Okay. Um, so in this case, this is going to be a 25 over eight. And let's see, um, this is going to be a oh, what times, what am I doing? Equals times here, a 16 over a 25. Now, again, you could square the 25, right? Or I could just leave this and say, well, really, <laughs> that's a 25 squared, which is the same thing as 25 times 25, right? So yeah, those are going to divide out. Eight goes into there. Would you get two fifths? Two? I'm getting a, those are going to divide out to a two, right? I'm getting a two over 25. 
Now I'm going to have to check my calculator to see if I did my math right. Oh, that's three, five cubed. That's a 125. Thank you. Da, 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 da. So embarrassing. Let's erase all that. <laughs> but same idea. So five cubed is going to be 125 or another way you could do this. I still get six, right? That's 125. Yes. Thank you so much. So anyways, that's five cubed, right? But I'm going to do it like this. Five times 25 times 25. Yes, you're ahead of me. And I'll just do this times a an eight times. That's going to be a four squared, which is 16 all over a 25 times a 25. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is, again, you can just simplify. I just want you to see how these simplified out. Like those divide out, right? And then this is going to be a... Now, again, this is still going to a 2. So I'm not seeing where you got the numerator on the left number. Um, the answer is 2 fifths. I'm getting a 50. But now I'm going to have to check this out and double check to make sure I'm not doing anything work or otherwise I'll have to go and check my work. Um, times, unless anybody else has seen a mistake that I made, I already made one mistake, so wouldn't be surprised if I made another mistake. Hmm. Yeah, two fifths is the correct answer. So correct, so where am I making my mistake or what mistake am I making? 25. What am I doing? 25 times 25 times 25. All right, let's just do it this way. Wow, it's embarrassing. So that's 125. I would go down. That's going to be eight times is 16 over. Now, I don't know 25 times 25. Well, actually, I guess I do. 25 times 25 is going to be a, I don't know. I should know. 625. Why did I just go with that? All right, and then you can just go ahead and simplify. That's going to go to a 2. I know a 5, 25 goes into both of those, right? So 625 divided by 25. Should know that. That's going to be, yeah, obviously that's going to be 25. And that's going to be 3. Gotcha. So let's see. You can divide that. Divide by 25, so that would be a 3. Or a 25. 3. Hmm. Hmm, 25 squared. I'm still not good. What am I doing? What is my answer? Two times two times eight. Um, <laughs> you gotta do a lot. You can see how many answers I do and I'm still making mistakes. Um, two squared is 16, 25 times six twenty five. And then, I, I don't know. I don't know what the heck I'm doing. Uh, so let's make sure I did this correctly. So that'd be 125 times 16. And then 8 times is 625. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you multiply in those, and that's going to divide to the two-fifths. So... <clears throat> yeah. I'm yeah, but six over twenty five is not the same thing as two fifths. That's what I'm just not seeing. Hmm. Well, either way, you're gonna get the answer when you simplify this. Oh, sorry. Um, as you multiply those across, then you'll get that answer from in there, which I was verified, but I don't know what I was doing with my simplifying, but I don't know, my brain is hurting, so I'm just going to skip over. Um, or not skip over, but just move along. Um, solve by graphing. Graph and find the roots. Mm, okay. Um, so in a problem like this, the first thing, I don't really, I wouldn't really graph by solving, but whatever. So I'd factor out the x, so I get an x squared plus a three X minus 10. Okay. Now, again, if we want to, what I would do is like set this equal to zero, right? So you have that. 
Okay, and then you can divide by negative one on both sides. So now I have zero equals a x squared plus three x minus 10. Okay, now we wanna go and see if we can factor this, which again, thankfully we can. Um, factor form with two numbers, multiply giving negative 10, add to give you positive three. That's gonna be an x plus a five times an x minus a two. Okay, so therefore x equals a negative five and x equals a positive two. Okay, so now looking at this, we know the graph is gonna open down, right? And then these are two x intercepts. So it just says solve by graphing, but again, we just have one, two, three, four, five, and positive two. Okay, and then the graph is gonna open down. So it looks something like that. And there we go, voila. Um, this student was asking questions like, just understanding logarithms. So I think it's just really important to kind of understand like the general, you know, logarithm means. So if I had log base three of nine equals two, okay? And what this is saying is log, <clears throat> sorry, of three raised to what number equals nine? Well, again, we know that's two, right? So a lot of times you're thinking about x logarithmic equations. I always like to think about them uh, in their exponential form, right? So three squared is equal to nine. So that is the exponential form. Now, in this case, we have nothing here, right? So just use an x. So two raised to what power is equal to a 16? That's basically what we're asking ourselves. Two raised to what power is equal to 16? Well, that answer is going to equal a five. No, a four. Okay, so in this case, six raised to what number is equal to a 14? Well, in that case, I have absolutely no idea. So in this case, what you could do is you could use what we call the um, change of base formula. So in this case, I have no, like six to raised to the first power of six, six squared is 36, right? So we're not even close to 14. So the cool thing about logarithms is if I want to evaluate a logarithm with a base six, um, you know, in a cal standard like scientific calculator, graphic calculator is not going to have your different bases. So they're either going to go off base 10 or base E, which would be your natural logarithm. So what you can do is you can just rewrite this as log of 14 divided by a log of six. So the logarithm, if you remember, is going to be always in base 10, right? Unless there's a different base written there. So what I'll do here is I'll just do log of 14 divided by a log of what, six? And that's gonna give me an answer of 1.47. So approximately, because I'm going around 1.47. And then this one is basically saying eight raised to what number is equal to eight? Well, we know that answer is just gonna be a one. Um, all right, so that's all the questions I have um, for here that was initially submitted. Let me go back into, I saw some of you guys' questions. Uh, 125 times five, right, so 625, thank you. Um, But uh, yeah, I'll get to any of your questions that you guys have submitted at brownandco.com forward slash Q&A. Doesn't look like many other extras, but I'll definitely just, just double check. Yeah, okay. But if you guys do have any more questions, you guys can definitely um, check that out. So um, Brian, I'm currently majoring in math and I'm wondering the higher you go in math, do you end up forgetting about things like how to factor? I mean, definitely you forget some things. I mean, I, but I would say lastly, you like the more math you do, like the better and you also understand like more intuitive, um, from everything from on there. So you just get better at things, um, in that regard. So I wouldn't say you a lot of times forget things. Um, but yeah, I think you would probably, a lot of things build on each other. All right. Uh, well, very happy to help you out. Don't even watch for the choice. I just enjoyed the bits. Well, <laughs> happy to help you out. Uh, or happy just to be there for um, some some uh, entertainment. Thank you very much. Yes, I don't know why I couldn't simplify things. Yeah, that reduces over to three. Thank you very much. You, you're the man. Um, Brian, do you believe that the education system is missing subjects or life skills that must be taught? I mean, yes. I think a lot with financial literacy, um, I think is a big one, you know, just understanding finances, how that works. I think also a lot of our curriculum could be revamped as far as like making sense, um, for the current, you know, population and current needs of society. So yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I mean, it depends on what you mean by getting good at it. Um, you know, I think everybody's going to be a little bit different there. So, 
but I think it's, you know, everybody, it, I think just putting in practice every night is going to put you at a good, um, a good leg up, um, I guess for any class that you're going to be in. All right. I got the different here. I'm just really confused how it works. I can't find a video on it. Alternate entangles form a Z shape. They're sometimes called Z angles. A and B are adjacent angles and adjacent angles add up to 180. Okay. D and C and C are also adjacent. Okay. Um, A and B are adjacent. Yes. Yeah, I'm not sure what the question is. If you if you have a like a diagram or like specific question you want me to like send in on there, I'm just not really sure. I mean, I can talk more about it, but I just don't want to. Um, I don't want to spend a lot of time going through like I, I'm not sure if I can help you exactly what you're able to have on there. But if you want to send anything over on brianmclaurin.com forward slash Q and A, that might help me better understand where exactly you're getting stuck. Uh, so you just find it like it is at the origin and then you're just going to shift it over. So if you remember the equations for the asymptotes, um, Y equals plus or minus, I believe what a over B or B over a times X minus H, um, you know, plus K. So you're basically just plugging in your H and your K into those equations. So you just need to find the center. So you need to find your A and your B right for the formulas. And then in addition to that, you need to know H and K because you're going to plug those into those formulas. So make sure you know the formulas for the asymptotes and then you're just basically plugging everything in. Um, I don't know what you mean by a negative equation, but you cannot take the logarithm of a negative number. Um, if you go to brianmcclogan.com, it's pinned in the chat. It's also in the description, brianmcclogan.com forward slash Q&A. Um, you can go and submit inside of there. All right. I'm struggling to solve for D in the equation. It's a good question. So let's go and do this. Um, I usually don't do math questions from on here, but this one just seems basic. And I was like, whatever. But yeah. Do not waste your time, guys, putting in a lot of math questions into this uh, the chat because I'm not going to be able to get to them. Um, the best thing, if you do want me to go ahead and take a look at something in math, then um, go ahead and go to brianmcclogan.com forward slash QA. So the main thing, if you want to solve for D, is you need to get D off the denominator, right? So first thing you want to do is isolate it. So we're going to get the D, this expression with the D, all by itself. Okay, now we need to get D off the denominator. So to get D off the denominator, since D is basically dividing everything, you need to multiply everything times D, right? So then you have five is equal to a one over C minus B, and that's gonna be times D, right? Well, now D is being multiplied by all this. So we wanna undo multiplication. So we're just going to divide all that over. So one over C minus B. So therefore D is equal to a five over one over C minus B. Whew. All right. Well, hey, dang. Well, happy to we'll help you out. Um, yeah, that's why I don't usually handle questions inside the chat because once I do one question, then all these questions just go through <laughs> from on there. Uh, but I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, I just I get too many questions going through on the chat, and then also it's very difficult um, to go through and check all through them. So if you have questions, math questions, guys, feel free to go to brianmcclone.com forward slash Q and A. Um, it's in the chat. It's in pinned as a chat. Oh, it's also in the description. Um, if you have a pressing problem, but I'm just going to go and take a look at some of the other questions that have been submitted just to make sure I got everything that people have did. But, um, if you still have like school going on next week or you have more questions, you know, feel free to put them in for next week as well. Or also guys, you can go and check out the discord server, which actually one and I post that out. Uh, if you've not already joined the discord, I'd highly recommend go ahead and check it out. Um, all right. I am taking SAT next week and ACT. Wow. 
any tips? Uh, yeah, do as many practice problems as possible. So hopefully you have like a book or like some online review. I would just try to do as many problems as possible. So if you can do like 15 problems a day, um, that'd be awesome. And just, you know, practice, 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 practice. I think the more practice and more pressure you can put on yourself on practicing problems and like seeing how those questions are asked, because a lot of times they're asked in ways that maybe you're not familiar with or not um, used to, then just the better prepared you're going to be. Uh, my six-year-old son has been trying to figure out watching videos on how to solve problems of quadratic equations by factoring it is trinomials at polynomials and quadratic equations. Yeah, it's, it's difficult. I mean, I did one up here, um, and I kind of worked through it quickly. I didn't really like fully explain the factoring process, but you know, it takes, it, it takes time. Um, I mean, and one of the things I've always, you know, one of the reasons why I've kind of created my channel the way I did was like solving so many questions is like, you know, just watching one video or watching one tutorial sometimes will like connect the dots and sometimes it won't. So, you know, if you go ahead and take a look at my playlist that I have for like factoring or solving quadrat, I mean, I'll have like 50 different examples. So hopefully, you know, seeing one example or, and they're all short, right? Roughly like two to three minutes. So hopefully seeing multiple of those examples. Um, and every single time I teach it, I'm going to probably be teaching maybe a little bit different you know, line of attack to help you understand the approach that I was making. Um, and so that's what I would just, you know, kind of recommend. I mean, sometimes it's, it just takes your brain a little bit more, um, longer to kind of digest the information. Sometimes you just need to hear it from somebody else. Sometimes you just need to hear a different explanation. Um, and sometimes one problem might be more difficult than the other, like it's the same thing, but it's like, it can just get you tripped up. So I would just recommend kind of looking at multiple different examples and keep on practicing, um, uh, from there. Like, I mean, I like to say like I can explain it great and perfectly for everybody, but it's like that's not the case. It's never going to be the case. Um, I did do a video live stream on this on um, on this, but yeah, I, I think the same thing. You like you got to learn, you got to watch videos, you can read a book, whatever you want to do. But in the same respect, you still got to do math. You got to practice problems. So get a notebook and make sure you're doing the math. So you know if you're going to be learning math on your own by watching YouTube videos, awesome. If you're going to be watch reading a math textbook, awesome. But just make sure you're still doing the practice problems. Um, all right. I have the name of the rule. If you don't know, it's okay. I just don't know what, I mean, what you're referring to is what rule, but yeah, if you want to give me the name of the rule, sure. All right. So let's go. Let's see what we have here. Find the exact value of the expression parallel of latitude. Yeah. I'm not familiar with the parallel of latitude. It's at least not something I've ever taught but now I'm going to have to look it up. Huh. Parallel latitude. Um, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I apologize. That's probably one of the reasons why I'm just, I've never taught anything from there, at least in my classes. So I do apologize from that. Um, so I, yeah, that's probably the reasons why I won't be able to go through it, but Definitely something, um, definitely something I think is very like related to a lot of stuff that I've done and I like taught. I just don't think I've ever had to go through um, anything on that. All right. Or I know I haven't. All right. All right. Got another question. Roxy, who kind of get over? Oh, well, so happy to help you guys out. It's awesome. All right, got another question there. Um, yeah, sorry about that, Jake. Um, draw the graph. I have no idea what that graph looks like. That looks crazy. What is uh what is the video you're watching? Uh, I'm currently watching a math video to procrastinate studying for my math homework. Okay, okay, gotcha. I thought you were watching a video about dis to procrastination on math. Uh, I have a question on graphing trig function. In your videos, you showed how to graph with decimals, but you show us how to graph without it as a teacher. It doesn't allow us to use graph. Yeah, I mean, I have tons of videos on graphing trigonometry. Well, I would just say like usually in after like I used to I used to teach graphing very in detail with trig. And then it just became one of those things where I just didn't, you know, I, I just kind of taught more basic functions, like knowing transformations. And that was kind of it. Um, and cause I just found like a lot of students would struggle so much with the graphing tech, you know, graphing portion of trig. 
And I, it's not really what I wanted students to focus on. I wanted them to understand the transformations. I wanted them to understand the characteristics of the graph. And that was about it. So if you look at some of my older videos on graphing trig, um, I do have plenty of examples there. Okay. Um, let's go and take a look at this, this trigonometric function. Um, so, or this expression here as the cotangent inverse. Okay. So there's a couple things we need to understand. So the cotangent of any angle is going to equal a X over the Y, right? When we're dealing with points that are on the unit circle. So let's go and take a look at our unit circle and let's go and think about what kind of points would we be dealing with where we would get a negative one, right? So in this case, we have one, Uh, in this case, we have one comma zero. This would be zero comma one, negative one comma zero, and zero comma negative one. Now, again, remember, we can't divide by zero, right? So when y is zero, that's going to be undefined. So these two points are not going to work. Then we're going to be dealing with basically these two points, right? So we have this point as well as this point. Now, the reason why I'm not going out, because if you remember from um, the restrictions like tangent and cotangent are restricted for their inverse functions between pi halves and negative pi halves. Okay. So the only answer here is going to be a negative pi halves, which again, you could also do a negative 90 degrees in um, radian form. Uh, oh, done. It's 1 a.m. where I go. Well, that's good. Keep, <laughs> keep on the work. Thanks for staying up. Um, Yeah, I mean, the negative is you're still just looking for the point. Like, what is going to be the value when I have my my y over my, uh, my x over my y is going to equal, oh, when is, oh, I'm an idiot. What am I doing? That's going to equal zero. That's not right. I was wondering about that. I'm like, I'm an idiot. I need to go to bed. <laughs> um, so none of these work, right? So then we got to say, all right, so then what point would work? Hmm, okay, so what about this point right here? That point right there is right square root of two over two comma square root of two over two. Now that when you took the X over the Y, that's going to give you a one, right? When you do X over Y. Come on. So when you do the X over Y, that's going to give you one. So what we're going to look for is actually this point down here, right? So that point is going to be a square root of two over two, a negative square root of two over two that's going to give you your negative one. So the answer here is going to be a negative pi over four or a negative 45 degrees. So I apologize guys. Um, my brain is tired. It's been a long weekend. It's a holiday. It's a holiday weekend. Thank you all, um, United States for giving your service. Um, Memorial day and for congratulations to all of you guys that have wrapped up the school year. Um, for congratulations, to all of you that have graduated. I am so happy to be a part and for you guys showing up on my live stream. Uh, I really do appreciate that. 125 weeks. Uh, I can't even believe it. So I'll be uh, going live again next week um, for you guys. So if you do have any questions or you just want to stop by and hang a chat, I will be here. Otherwise, feel free guys to join in on the Discord. Um, get, your answer, get your questions answered. Get prepared for next year. I hope you guys all have a great week and I will see you next week. Cheers.